Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I'm going to be tier ranking 2021 book releases. Um, I've seen tier ranking all over YouTube and I figured I would like to do this with some releases. So it's a video where I tell you about some new releases and share them with you guys, but also rank them based on like if I'm going to read them or which ones I'm most excited about. These are just, I, doing research for this video was really fun because I just like went through a bunch of book lists like from like I don't know, articles, journals, and whatever, and Goodreads, of course, and looking through book lists about 2021 releases. I have a very good variety here of genres. Um, we got young adult, we got adult, we have like different genres, different authors, just a whole bunch of stuff. So there's a lot going on right here. And some of these I haven't heard of and I just picked for this video. So they're not all like my most anticipated, but I have included like some of my most anticipated and I'm just kind of like choosing between those. Um, so anyway, I'm going to explain my tiers right now. So I'm going to sh uh, share my screen. I'm d that's why I'm looking at my phone because I'm going like, to look at the synopses and all. So my first tier, my top tier is I need it now, which means I want the book right now. Like I can't wait until the release date, whatever. The second one after that I put I'm calling the publisher. I thought this was really funny. Um, it's not serious. I'm not actually going to call the publisher, but I thought this was for books that I would love to like get early copies of um, and love to be sent them early so that I can read them in advance. Um, that would be really cool. The middle tier I put pre-order because these books I will be pre-ordering um, and I do want on release day so I want to read it when it comes out. Um, so I can I can basically wait for it but I do want to read it as soon as it comes out and I also want to support all of these authors. Um, the second, I mean the fourth tier we have is buy it in paperback. So the reason for putting this tier is because all books mostly if they're published by a big house are released in hardback in like hardcover. Um, so buying in paperback just means waiting a while to their released in like paperback version if they do become paperback version. So that basically just means I can wait for it. And then the last tier we have is not going to read. I don't anticipate putting any books on here. I just needed a last tier. Some of these releases I haven't even heard of. So after reading the synopsis and I might decide that I, it's not for me and that I don't really want to read it. So I put that tier there. I don't think I'll be using it. Hopefully not. I'm trying to be really, I'm trying to be very picky about the ones that I put and not just put them all and I need it now. Anyway, I created this tier template on Tier Maker. I will be leaving it in the description down below if you would like to make your own video or rank any of these books. But anyway, let's just get started into the video. So the first book that we're going to be discussing is Chain Disgusting. Wow. The first book we're going to be discussing is Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. This is a newest Shadow Hunters novel, I believe the first in a series, and it follows Cordelia Carstairs as she fights demons in London. Um, now, I, I actually had heard about this book, of course, through Instagram. I'm not a huge Shadow Hunters fan. I love The Infernal Devices and... I did read the first three books in like the Shadowhunters series, like City of Bones and all that. Um, I do like her writing. I, I do like her writing and I think it's really fun. Like her books are really fun. I really don't, I'm not that excited about it. I'm like, I'm not yearning for it. So I think I'm going to put it in, buy it in paperback because it's a book that I can definitely wait for and I feel like I have to be in the mood if I like want to read like a Shadowhunters new like fantasy novel. Um, so I'm going to put it there. I know a lot of people are excited about it though, I know it's in some people's like, I need it now tier. So I'm going to put it in buy in paperback. The second book that I have here is Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. This is a whip smart debut about three women, transgender and cisgender, whose lives collide after an unexpected pregnancy forces them to confront their deepest desires around gender, motherhood, and sex. I saw this on a list and I thought it was really cool. It is an own voices novel and the author is a trans woman. Um, it seems it fearlessly navigates the most dangerous taboos around gender, sex, and relationships, gifting us a thrillingly original, witty, and deeply moving novel. This book, um, I don't think I've ever read a book with the main character, a transgender main character. Um, I'm really excited for this one. I think I'm going to put this in pre-order. I really would like to support this, especially since, um, this year I'm trying to read a lot of own voices, like, novels. Um, and I think it'd be really cool to pre-order that one. I love the cover too. I don't know if that's the U.S. Yeah, I don't know if that's the U.S. cover. But anyway, Detransition Baby. The second, the third book that I have here is 
Honey and Issues Guide to Fake Dating by Adiba Jagardar. If you didn't see my recent video, I featured this in my uh, book haul, I believe, and I actually got an ARC from the publishers. So because of that, I'm going to put it in I'm Calling the Publisher, but generally I'm like really excited about it. It follows um, a bi bi two bisexual Bengali girls, and it has that fake dating trope where they start to develop real feelings for each other. Um, I'm really excited for it. I love books with bisexual rep, and a lot of these books actually have bisexual rep after my research from it. But anyway, I'm excited about that one. The next book we have here is Hurricane Summer, oh not Hurricane Summer, sorry, Instructions for Dancing by Nicola Yoon. Main character Evie Thomas is pessimistic about love until she meets a boy named X at La Brea Dance Studio and he begins to teach her differently. It sounds really cute. I like the, I like reading about books with like dancing. Um, I remember Tiny Pretty Things that was like a really favorite novel. Sorry, there was a car going down the street. Um, I I don't really, I, I haven't really enjoyed Nicola Yoon's books in the past. They're just not for me. Like they're, I think YA romances are kind of like not for me anymore. Um, I'm gonna put this in not going to read. I probably will end up picking it up if like I borrow it from a library or something or if a friend really loves it. But at this point, I don't really see myself reading it just because I don't really like, reach for Nicola Yoon books and this one is just kind of like it's like a young adult romance so anyway next one the next book that I have here is Hurricane Summer by Asha Bromfield this is super cool this is a debut novel from one of the actresses on Riverdale which I thought was really cool um uh it is Tila spends a summer on the island of Jamaica and to spend oh to spend time with her father who she does not know well all in the midst of an actual hurricane. So Hurricane Summer is a powerful coming-of-age story that deals with colorism, classism, young love, the father-daughter daughter dynamic, and what it means to discover your own voice in the center of complete destruction. Doesn't that just sound like absolutely beautiful? I like, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna put this in, I'm gonna put this in I'm Calling the Publisher. I would love to get an early copy of this book and then pass it on to an own voices reviewer, of course, but I am super interested in books that feature like natural disasters. I love reading books about the environment in general. So I think like with calamity of like her life and like with this like contrasted against this like natural disaster, I think it would be really cool. The cover is really beautiful. And of course, um, she's an actress from Riverdale. That's really cool. Anyway, next book we have here is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I had to put this on here because if you don't know, I'm a huge fan of Taylor Jenkins Reid. Uh, her other like books, Stacey Jones and the Six, uh, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, huge huge fan. I will probably read anything from her. Um, it takes place. It's another like historical novel. Four family, four famous siblings throw an epic party to celebrate the end of the summer, but over the course of 24 hours, their lives will change forever. That is super interesting. It does, it takes place in August 1983. I don't know if I said that already. The cover is beautiful. It, okay, like straight off the bat, I'm gonna say, it doesn't like really interest me. Like the whole plot of it is kind of, it does really sound like, like a YA book. Um, but because it is Taylor Jenkins Reid and I really know that I love her work, I'm going to put it in pre-order because I was gonna pre-order it anyway. Um, but now I'm like, Oh, I don't know because like because Daisy Jones and the Six wasn't a book that I when I read this novel I was like oh my god I need this book but then I was thinking like Seven Husbands of Ellen Hugo was so good and I read Daisy Jones and Daisy Jones is amazing as well so yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna put that there um so the next book that we have here is Off the Record by Cameron Garrett this is the behind the scenes access of Almost Famous meets the searing revelations of Me Too in this story of a teen journalist who uncovers the scandal of the decade. Oh yes, this is when I was doing research about it. It follows like... So the main character wins a contest to write a celebrity profile for Deep Focus magazine. She's equal parts excited and scared but also ready. She's got this. However, she begins to uncover dark secrets about this dazzling world. Sorry and wants to expose the man responsible. There is bisexual rep in this book. I'm super excited. We are here for it. There is bisexual rep. Um, it does talk a lot about like the Me Too movement and like the main character. I love like reading books from like this journalistic lens where the main character is like, a, I think that's why I love Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo so much because she's kind of like a journalist or writing a profile. I really like this. I'm gonna put this in pre-order. I really am interested in this and I really like, I want it. Actually, 
I'm actually really picky. I haven't put any books in I Need It Now yet. Um, okay, I'm going to put it in pre-order for now and we'll see if my mind changes. Okay, anyway, the next book is Perfect on Paper by Sophie Gonzalez. Um, if you didn't see my last video on guessing the book synopsis based on the cover, I basically guessed the synopsis of this almost perfectly correctly. It is a um, YA contemporary. The main character is a relationship guru, um, but she's having trouble with her like her own love life. It's a queer. Um, now the main character is bisexual. Again, we are here for it. We are here for the rep. Um, this one sounds amazing only because I love sex education. I actually said in that video I was really surprised to see that it was like kind of following this sex ed sex education plotline if you haven't watched the TV show. I'm gonna put it in- ugh, this is so hard. I'm gonna put it in I Need It Now because... Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna put it in I Need It Now because I do kind of need it now, like I want it now. And also like I love sex education and would give anything to see like more- like they need to hurry up and like make more because it was fantastic and I'm excited to read this book. Anyway, the next book we have here is Sisters of the Snake by Serena and Sasha Nanua. This is a book following two identical twin sisters that are separated at birth, one royal and one an orphan, and they decide to switch places um, and they must they find they must work together in their new positions to like save the kingdom or whatever. Um, I love this one. I love how the authors, the authors of this book are twin sisters as well. Um, there's Indian rep. I love like princess, it's giving me princess and the popper vibes. If you guys ever watch that Barbie movie, I love that movie so much. Um, anyway, I love this cover and I, I actually like, I actually like reading about this synopsis now and like looking back at it, I'm going to put in I Need It Now because I want this book now. I, I love reading books about twin sisters. Um, and because I love Princess and the Popper so much, like I feel like this book is just going to be, this book is just going to be everything that like I want in life right now. So the first, the next book that I am looking at is Take Me Home Tonight by Morgan Matson. Um, so I put this on this list because Morgan Matson is such a popular author here on like YouTube and like Instagram. Her covers are gorgeous. This cover is no exception. It is like the New York City, my like my hometown basically. Beautiful cover. Um, I pulled this from Goodreads. Two girls, one night, zero phones. Kat and Stevie, best friends, sneak away to spend a night on the town in New York City. And I don't know. I don't know if I'm into this anymore. The last time I read a Morgan Matson novel was like four, I want to say four or three years ago. I just don't think this speaks to me. I also am just like not interested in it at all. I'm going to put in not going to read. Please do not. Please do not come for me. <laughs> I'm sorry if I don't, if I'm not interested in it. But yeah, we're just going to go with that. The next book I have here is The Chosen and the Beautiful by Ni Vo. This is um, the debut novel that reinvents this classic of the American canon as a coming-of-age story full of magic, mystery, and glittering excess and introduces a major new literary voice. <gasps> oh yes! This is an, a queer Asian Great Gatsby retelling. What the hell? Okay, this is this is amazing. So like the main character is navigating this like social, this 1920s socialite scene as an, a queer Asian. I need this now. I need this now and I want it now. <laughs> I really, really want it. Like, I want to read it so bad. And I don't think it comes out until the summer. So I'm going to put that there. It's also a debut novel. And I think it's really cool because I am reading The Great Gatsby soon for another video. So I will be enjoying that. And then I will hopefully be reading this um, early. I don't know. I really, 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 really want it now. Okay, so the next book that I have here is The Committed by Viet Nguyen. Um, this book I included in here. I think I included it because I saw his name and I was really interested in it. Basically I'm taking an Asian American lit class this semester and we've actually read Wen's um, his other short story called The Other Man and I like loved it. It was amazing. We discussed it. It was great. Um, for this one I might have to read his first novel called The Sympathizer for this. Um, I don't really- there wasn't like a really good synopsis but he is basically a Vietnamese American author and um, The Committed is a blistering portrayal of the commitment and betrayal that will cement Viet Nguyen's position in the 
firmament of American letters. I just, I'm like really interested in uh, Asian American stories. Um, because I've read his work already, I kind of like have an inkling of like what this book is about. Well, not what this book is about, but like what his writing will be and how much I'll like it. I'm going to put this in Biden paperback because I'm probably going to have to read The Sympathizer first. Um, so I'll read that book and then I'll probably, which, well, I don't know when I'll read that book. I have to get it first. It's already out, I think. And then I will have to get the committed whenever I want to read it next. But yeah, anyway, just wanted to tell you guys about a new author that I discovered. Okay, the next author on the next book I have here is Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bully. Debut author Angeline Bully crafts a groundbreaking YA thriller about a native teen who must root out the corruption in her community. For readers of Angie Thomas and uh, Angie Thomas and Tommy Orange. I love Tommy Orange's book. I read that for a class as well. Haven't read Angie Thomas yet. I don't know why. I'm I'm a fake booktuber. Um as a biracial unenrolled tribal member and the product of a scandal, 18-year-old Donise, Donise Fontaine has never quite fit in, both in her hometown and on the nearby Ojibwe reservation. Donise dreams of studying medicine, but when her family is struck by tragedy, she puts her future on hold to care for her fragile mother. She gets caught up in the middle of this like criminal investigation and she wants to find the people who are involved in it. This sounds amazing. I've also been seeing so much hype for it on Bookstagram. Like a lot of people got packages and it looks really awesome um i love i just love like the cover the story of it i'm really excited about this one i might i'm gonna put it in pre-order because i actually am gonna pre-order this book and i'm really excited to read it and share it with you all um so yeah i'm gonna go with that Okay, the next book that I have here is Forest of Stolen Girls by June Her. After her father vanishes while investigating the disappearance of 13 young women, a teen returns to her secretive hometown to pick up the trail in the second YA historical mystery in the second YA historical mystery from the author of The Silence of Bones. Oh, so this is I think this is June's second novel. Um, yeah, I also featured this in my guessing the covers books and I didn't guess correctly for this book. Not gonna lie, I I included it in here because of course I wanted like a variety and I wanted to use some books that I used in that video. Uh, I'm not that excited about this one. I might have to like hear what pe like my friends think about it before I read. It's not something that like I just like gravitate toward like mystery, thriller, that kind of book. Um, it does have like Asian characters though. I love Asian red. Um, I'm gonna put this one in Biden paperback. I feel like it'd be too It'd be too bad to put it in not going to read, but I'm going to put it in buy it in paperback because I would buy this in paperback if, like, a friend told me that they really loved it and then I would read it too and then I'll love it. So, yeah, I'm going to do that for that. Okay, so the next book that I have here is The Heart Principle by Helen Huang. U.S. Uh, today best-selling author Helen Huang returns with a witty and sizzling new romance that shows how wrong you can be about someone and how right they can be for you. There is a character who has OCD in this book. I love the way that Helen Huang writes about love and how she details its like insecurities um, and like vulnerabilities. I really like her writing. I love The Kiss Quotient. My boyfriend and I read The Kiss Quotient um, together. He is obsessed with it now. I didn't really like The Bride Test that much. Um, I just, I don't know why, I didn't enjoy The Brightest as much as I enjoyed The Kiss Cushion, so I'm like hesitant to read The Heart Principle, but I'm going to put The Heart Principle in paperback because I know my boyfriend will be reading it and I know, mm, sorry, and I know that I will probably be picking up his copy, so I'm going to do that. Okay, the next uh, book that I have here is The Infinity Courts by Akemi Don Bowman. Oh my gosh, when I read the synopsis for this in Goodreads, let me just read this to you. 18-year-old Nami Miyamoto is, a, is certain her life is just beginning. She has great family, just graduated high school, and is on her way to a party where her entire class is waiting for her, including, most importantly, the boy she's been in love with for years. The only problem? She's murdered before she gets there. When I read that, I was just like, holy shit, I need this book now. Um, she wakes up in a place called Infinity, a place where human consciousness goes when physical bodies die, but she finds that it is a corrupt place and wants to bring down the corruption. Science fiction, uh, like, uh, this book sounds literally amazing. Like, can you imagine just, like, reading a synopsis like that? Like, I didn't even expect that part, like, where she gets murdered before and she has, like, this perfect life. I really love this. I'm gonna put it in. I need it now because I do need it now. I think out of all the books I've 
been most excited about Infinity, the Infinity Chords, so I'm going to put that there. Okay, the next book that I have is The Mirror Season by Anna Marie McLemore. I have read the uh, this author's other books. I've really enjoyed it. When two teens discover that they were both sexually assaulted at the same party, they develop a cautious friendship through her family's possibly magical pastelaria, his secret forest of otherworldly trees, and the swallows returning to their hometown. This sounds like a really, like, moving story. Although I'm not, I, I don't know, I, I really love Anne-Marie's writing. I'm probably going to put this in buy in paperback, um, just because I don't have a considerable amount of excitement for it, but I'm also just excited for this, like, I'm excited for all these stories to be out in the world. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do that. The next book is The Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin. I put this on here. I've actually already read this book, so I'm going to put it in. But if I were, oh, I'm sorry, this book shouldn't be in here, but I do, this book, this video is about new releases, so I did want to include it. This book, um, I read an early copy of it, like an early, like, like unfinished um, book for it. I don't know what to call it. But basically, this book follows these witches who can basically, basically control, like, this, they have, like, powers controlling the weather and the seasons and they've been maintaining the climate for a really long time um but they start losing control of the climate and because of that they there are a host of problems and it does touch upon climate change it touches upon environmental issues environmental degradation from humans um i love this kind of this relationship between the humans and the witches in this book i think it's really cool and i don't know y'all should just pre-order this book and read it because it is amazing the magic system is really unique it's it's based on seasons and basically the because seasons evoke these very different emotions like every month it is also very like emotional and a lot of the characters um, make decisions based on like what season it is so anyways this is amazing if you've ever watched that barbie movie with like the fairies the with the seasons i think you will really like this one it reminded me of that a lot okay the next book that i have is tokyo ever after by emiko jean this is crazy rich asians meets the princess diaries and a novel where a girl discovers in her senior year of high school that she is a royal princess of japan i'm gonna put this in i need it now because this is one of my most anticipated releases for 2021 i actually the publishers actually just sent me a copy literally yesterday when i was getting ready to film this video and i put it on there and it's like i manifested this like energy and then it just showed up on my doorstep so i'm really excited about this okay so we're down to our last two books the next book that i have is whereabouts by uh, I think it's Jumpa Lahiri. Um, so this is another case where I read Lahiri's short story called Mrs. Sen in my Asian American Lit class and that is the most heartwarming, one of the most heartwarming stories I've ever read. Um, so this is her first novel. She's written in Italian and is translated into English. It brims with the impulse to cross barriers. By grafting herself onto a new literary language, Lahiri has pushed herself to a new level of artistic achievement. It follows a woman with the need to belong and a refusal to form long-lasting ties. There's South Asian rep, the author South Asian. I... I think this is also the case of, like, the the book The Committed. I'm like excited for it but I'm probably like I, I can wait for it. I just am really interested in it because I saw that it was coming out in 2021 and was really interested because I didn't know that they were like publishing books because I had just read short stories from them in class. Um, so yeah I'm gonna put it in buy in paperback but I'm really excited about reading more of Lahiri's work. Okay, and the last book that I have on this video is Yoke by Mary H.K. Choi. Um, I saw this book like pop up on Instagram and I wasn't that excited about it because I did not like emergency contact as much as I like wanted to. I thought it was a very interesting read with interesting dynamics but I didn't really like the writing. It was very slow for me to get into. Um, but then I read the synopsis about this and it follows two estranged sisters, June who is struggling in school and her sister Jane who is rich and lives a very easy life until her sister Jane is diagnosed with uterine cancer and the two sisters reunite and must face like the fact of her being diagnosed with this. I, this book is really personal. Um, my grandma was diagnosed with uterine cancer last year during the mess of like COVID. Um, I actually like 
low-key cried when I read the synopsis because I don't think I've really read how characters have to deal with that with comparing like with my experience and, and many other people's experience with dealing with family members or loved ones who have cancer. Um, it was a really hard year last year and I just think this book is like it kind of just I read it and I was like oh my god like this is a book that I need right now like deep in my heart. Um, so yeah I'm gonna put it in I need it now. I'm about to like bug everyone for this book and it comes out in March. I know the date of this book it comes out in March 2nd so I'm probably gonna buy it or pre-order it. I know I, I put it in pre-order but I, I just need this book now. I really need to I want to like relate to these characters um, and read about that and I also just like I said I've read uh, Mary H.K. Choi's work um, and while I didn't really enjoy the plot of Emergency Contact I really think I will like this one more um, but yeah Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Um, I'm super excited for all of these releases and I hope you are too. I will leave all the links down to the titles that are mentioned in this book along with their Goodreads links and also an affiliate link to bookshop.org which you can buy these books from an independent book bookstore and support independent bookstores. Um, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great week or weekend and I'll see you on my next one. Bye.